everyone, and welcome to the final episode of Season 1 of The Learning Corner with Scott and Stacy. As always, I'm Scott. And I'm Stacy. And today we're going to talk about um, the question that many entrepreneurs get uh, as they, they walk through their business with, hey, I can get 20 other people that can do that a lot cheaper. And how do you answer that? Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Scott? You ever had anybody that uh, you've given them a quote for a job and you hear, oh, my brother-in-law can do it for half that? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we've got a new air conditioning company mm -hmm. and one of the most common failures on an air conditioner is a capacitor. Okay. Okay. And most companies charge about $200 to diagnose it and figure out the, what the problem is and to get the correct capacitor in there and get it wired in properly. Um, and we hear many, many times, uh, well, I can buy a capacitor online for $12. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. well that's the cheapest capacitor there is. It doesn't come with any sort of a warranty doesn't match the capacitor necessarily that they need, but it does happen to be a capacitor. Right? Okay. So, um, and so it's very easy for people to dismiss the value of the knowledge and being able to diagnose it, being able to install it properly. Uh, we've actually had compressors that were taken out by because somebody swapped out their own capacitor and uh, ruined the compressor. Oh. Because they put the wrong capacitor in or they wired it improperly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now it's a $2,500 or $3,000 fix because they were going to save, go from $200 down to what they thought was $12. And so, yeah, it's, it's very easy for customers to look at the small business owner and say, that should be cheaper, or I can get my brother-in-law to do that. And so it, what to me is really important is when you have your own small business and you present your price, you need to know that your price is a reasonable price. Yes. Okay. And then you need to stick with your price. And the hardest thing, lesson for me to learn in business was that not every customer is my customer. Mm -hmm. Because when you first hang out that shingle, you need every single customer you can get. And it might be that, um, it might be in those early days that you cut your price a couple of times in order to get customers and to get, uh, start building your reputation. Mm -hmm but you've got to get pretty quickly to a point where you know what your value is and you're willing to turn down a job rather than give a job away for free or even pay in order to do that customer's work. Yeah. So, you know, sticking with that story, you know, with, with your capacitor customer that you've got there, um, what if, what, what do you say about, there are guys out there that will say capacitor's 12 bucks. You assume they know what they're talking about. Okay, and, and I'll install it for you for 50 bucks, okay? What's a customer getting with that? Well, they're uh, certainly not getting a warranty that can be depended on. Well, why would I care about a warranty though? Um, well, what happens, if, what happens if you bought the wrong capacitor off the internet and it destroyed your compressor? Who's gonna pay the $2,500 for the new compressor? When you hire a company to come out and work on your air conditioning unit or your roof, uh, you are, if you're paying a reasonable rate, then what you're expecting is that there's a warranty associated with the work that they did. What happens if somebody patches your roof but doesn't patch it correctly and the next rainstorm you get water that comes in and destroys your hardwood floors? Mm -hmm. Who pays for that? Yeah. Well, your assumption is that the person who did your roof patch did it correctly and that they ought to pay for replacing your floors or their insurance ought to pay for replacing your floors. But the funny thing about slipping your buddy 20 bucks or your brother-in-law 50 bucks, they don't carry insurance for that. And most of the time, the reason they're working for an extra 20 is because they don't have any money and they don't have the means to come in and replace your $3,500 floors. Yeah, yeah. Or your $2,500 compressor. Reminds me of a conversation uh, we had at one time with, with another entrepreneur who was really just felt that um, the, the company that was charging the, the, what, what we believe was a reasonable price was really taking advantage of customers. 
You remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. And he was adamant that there's no reason putting this thing in should cost more than 200 bucks. Right. And the company that hired him was charging $600 to put it in. Yeah. And he paying him $200 and they were putting four hundred dollars in his pocket in their pocket in their pocket and man he was just adamant that they were uh, taking, taking advantage, advantage yeah, yeah really taking advantage of the customer mm -hmm. yeah and until that thing doesn't work any longer and they had to hire somebody else to come take out the work that he got paid two hundred dollars to do take undo it turn around and redo it and weren't able to charge the customer any more money because that was warranty yeah, but there, there's another component of it that I remember during this conversation that I thought was so key. Um, he believed that we should only be charging the customer. The, the part was $150, and I'm going to charge him $200 to install it, okay? And, and if I remember this, this episode, it was, it was like five or $600 that, that the customer was being charged, and he just thought, man, that's taking advantage of that customer. But as we talked more, we said, who carries the warranty on that? And his answer was, well, he does. Okay? At $200, he's gonna carry the warranty on that. Well, what happens if he gets sick or he goes out of business? There's no warranty anymore. Yeah. That warranty goes away when he goes away. Yeah, so that's one of the things that to be cautious of, you can, to let your clients know, yes, there's always gonna be somebody out there who's gonna be able to do it cheaper, okay? But, are they going to be around if something doesn't go right? And let's just face it, we don't live in a perfect world. As, as good a job as we want to say we do on every single job that we do, mistakes happen, okay? Things happen, um, roofs have leaks, okay? And, and if you've gone with somebody who is just somebody you, you maybe get off Craigslist or you get off and you never can find them again, but you paid them $1,000 to do that repair, and now your Oriental rug is ruined. When you come back to me on that, well, I've charged a decent price so that I can make sure that I can take care of those things. I've got the insurance to be able to take care of those things. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's one of those battles that, uh, you know, you gotta make sure that you're right priced. Yep. Not too cheap, not too expensive, but you're priced in the right area. So. The first 20 years uh, that I was in business, my motto was when quality is as important as price. And it's kind of a, for an, a, a new business, it probably, it, it may have scared people away because what it said was I wasn't the cheapest, okay? Um, but what it also said was that we care about quality as much as we do about the price and Part of the reason that the price is where it is is so that you can provide quality and you can provide that warranty. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend that I, we were just talking about, I actually counseled him strongly that part of what he sells his customer is a warranty. Mm -hmm. I said, what's your average warranty? And he said, hey, always, everybody gets a five-year warranty. So he's promising for the next five years, his workmanship, if something goes wrong, he will go fix it Absolutely. for no cost. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I said to him, I said, I said, are you making a lot of money? No, man, I just barely get by. And I said, okay, so have you ever thought about quitting? Yeah, I think about quitting every day. Yeah, because he didn't have any money. Right. And I said, so if you quit tomorrow, because you thought about it every day, if you quit tomorrow and three months from now, my product that I bought from you uh, fails, and I need the warranty, where are you gonna be? I don't know, I heard talking about going to Colorado. Okay, so you sold me a five year warranty. Yeah. And now you're out of business, and so now my warranty's gone. Yeah. So really, who got taken advantage? The guy that paid $600 for this, or the guy who paid $200 for it, and now has no warranty. Right. So, yeah, it, it really, he, the cheap guy is the guy taking advantage of the customer as often as the expensive guy is taking advantage of the customer. Yeah, and so yeah, that's what we talk about being right priced, being that, that enough to be able to cover any, any issues, okay, and, and still be competitive in the marketplace. Right. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And 
And I don't encourage people to be the cheapest. When you're out there competing, don't compete based just on price, no. right? Yeah. Someone's Good. always going to try to be lower than you. Always. Yes. yes. Yeah. John Ruskin back in the yeah. 1800s, I think, said that there's hardly any product in the world, I'm probably not going to get it exactly right, but there's hardly any product in the world that some man can't make a little worse and sell a little cheaper. Yep. And the people who consider price only are this man's lawful prey. So just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. And and probably it's not even as good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, there's another component to, um, you know, the, the cheap guy uh, that, that I a lot of people don't talk about, but it, it's something that's near and dear to us. Um, part of when you're paying for that quality price, you're also contributing to the economy and in contributing to your community. Because like with us, yeah, could, could we be the cheapest people around and have no employees? Yeah. Probably, okay. But also, you're also wanting these these companies to then go and sponsor your little league program, sponsor the you know the the football programs and all those kind of things. Well, that costs something, and so to have a good community partner, you got to pay. Get somebody's got to pay for that somewhere. Right. And so um, when you're always looking for the cheapest guy, I ask the question: What do you do for my community? What what are you doing when you're the absolute cheapest? And, and let's go ahead and face it, you're probably not going to have a warranty because he's probably not going to be in business in a couple of years. What are you doing for the community? And, it, and if that's something that's not important to you, that's okay. But then we all have to remember that when it comes time for these things that, that people want to do in the community. Yeah. So. Well, and also, if you are the cheapest person in the marketplace, mm -hmm. then you are going to have to install, let's say that you're half the price. Okay. Okay. Let's say that I'm doing, um, let's say that I'm installing windows mm -hmm. okay and you're installing windows and I charge three hundred dollars to put in a window and you charge hundred and fifty yeah okay so I have to put in half as many windows as you do to make the same price. correct right to make the same amount of money okay so who has time to go help and be involved in their community who has time to be a little league coach the guy who's charging hundred and fifty dollars for a window or the guy who's charging three hundred dollars well he has to do twice as much work that's right. So he doesn't have any time off. So we've, we've talked before about time versus money. Yeah. And that's an important component is that you've got to be priced right in order to ever begin to have enough time in your life to be a, a contributing, functioning member of society. Right. Absolutely. So those are all very important points here. So, all right. Well, I think that wraps up this episode. It actually wraps, wraps up this season. Um, we've had our first season of The Learning Corner with Scott and Stacy. Um, we've enjoyed it. It's been fun. It has been fun. Uh, we do like to talk a lot about business, and so we look forward to more of these in the future. If you have any topics that you'd like us to talk about, feel free to drop us a line. Just uh, make a comment, and uh, we will see those. But, and can I also throw in that we've also had a couple of people reach out yeah. to us and say, hey, can we get together and talk about love it. that? And yeah, we, we love to talk business. Yep. And we'd love to meet you for a cup of coffee or, yep. or a margarita. Yep. A absolutely. Absolutely. No, we, we enjoy uh, the conversation and enjoy helping other small business people. Yep. So it's part of our passion. Yes. It's part of what makes us happy. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. Oh. So watch for more uh, as we launch into season two uh, with more topics. And uh, we will see you later. Thank you.